Hello everybody, we are back here on the second episode of Hardcore Hunts and what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna jump onto Layton real quickly just to see what time it is and depending on what time of day it is we're gonna hop to another map and see if we can grind up some cash now it's 621 I think our best bet is probably to try and go get some red deer on either Parque, Quattro, or T. Awaroa. Actually, now that I think of it, T. Awaroa does not have them drinking at 620, so I'm thinking Quattro might be our best bet, but we're going to try and get some cash up so that we can have money to purchase new weapons and gear and hopefully be able to actually get into some good guns that'll actually work decent against the bigger animals, because right now we're kind of limited. Alright, so now that we have got past all of that dialogue, there's a couple rule changes that I have made based off of your guys' comments on the last Hardcore Hunts. And the first one is no DLC weapons until all base weapons are unlocked for that class of weapons. So, for example, we have to unlock all of the base game rifles before we can start using DLC rifles. And I think that's really going to make it so we actually have to work for the DLC stuff. And I think it's going to be a positive change for this just to make it so that it's a little bit more difficult while also still allowing us to use those DLC weapons. And real quickly, I'm just going to toss all of the rules for this series up right now so you guys can kind of read them for those of you that have not seen the first episode of this series. Uh, it'll give you a brief uh, rundown of basically what we're going to be doing. So I think we're going to go to this outpost first. This is probably going to be the best one to head to. Uh, it's closest to a good lake and then we're probably going to try and make our way up to a red deer lake preferably this one so we'll have to get this outpost here and that'll also unlock a outpost right there which will give us access to one of the best ibex lakes on the map there we go there is our first animal on quattro Calinus. that right there is a european hare I was kind of thinking we were going to see a few of them while we're going to this outpost because they tend to be in these fields quite often, along with roe deer and wild boar, so maybe we can come across some of those too, but that is the first animal that we have spotted here on Quattro Calinus, and we actually just got a warning thump from it. So I think we'll walk a little bit quieter because I do want to try and snipe that thing with the 22. And I just remembered I don't actually have the 22. That's going to uh, make things more difficult. I guess we can just blast it with the 270. I mean, might as well, just so that we can get it down for a little bit of cash. One of the biggest things I gotta remember is not to make our dog track down dead rabbits because it'll end up crashing the game. So we're not going to be able to have any help from our dog whatsoever here. Yeah, there it is. 3.90 that's about $350 so I mean it's something at least that gets us I think one box of 270 ammo so at the very least it pays for a little bit of ammo and gives us some XP that is actually a wild boar call and I see one of them right there actually see a second one let's try to take that down hopefully our dog won't get in the way should be good right ah oh, man the breath thing is really gonna get to me it's so hard to get your heart rate down when you have no perks. Hopefully that did something. Soft points are not the best, so I don't have super high confidence that we did get it, but we can hope. We can hope that'll take it down. So it says it's a no organs hit, but there's definitely hunting pressure. I bet we spine shot that thing. That's the only thing that I can imagine it being is a spine shot. Because it was laying down and the spine's the thing that we would have most likely hit. So I'm pretty positive in this being a spine shot. And yeah, it ran right over to here. So it really didn't get far at all. And yeah, thoracic vertebrae. But that's 650 cash either way. So good that we got that thing down. There is a bunch of wild boar right there. I don't know if we'll be able to get any of these because we don't have any breath, but should be good. And that hit two. I don't know about that one, but maybe. 
Uh, sadly, neither have died so far, so I don't think those are going to be worth chasing. We're just going to run up to this outpost and unlock this real quickly. That way we'll actually have a spawn point. One thing that is a little bit unfortunate is we only have the 270 to take down the red deer with, so they're going to die kind of slow, but once it hits Ibex time, we'll probably transition into Ibex since one of the best Ibex lakes is actually pretty close to here. And honestly, there's a pretty high chance of getting a diamond at it, so I would not be surprised if we did end up finding one. We're going to go there next. It's quite a run, so it's going to take a while, but it will be worth it. Well, there is those wild boar. Uh, maybe we can finally get a shot off into them. I don't know if they're going to show themselves very well, and we are stuck with the beginner scope, so... Uh, we're gonna hope that did something. And hope that that one did too. Oh yeah, we definitely got one of them, so we'll real quickly grab that before we head over to that next tower. I also real quickly wanted to mention that we recently hit 15,000 subscribers, and I honestly can't thank you guys enough. It's crazy to me that we have already got to 15k with just a year of being on YouTube and doing content for the Hunter Call the Wild. I mean, technically I've been on YouTube longer, but I didn't start doing Call the Wild content until just a little over a year ago, and we've already hit 15,000 subscribers. I really can't thank you guys enough, so thank you all very much for getting us there. It is just insane. And speaking of subscribers, if you guys are brand new to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the like button, and ring that notification bell. So you guys will never miss a video. Also be sure to comment down below with your favorite part of the series, things you think that we should change in this series, or just what you expect to see out of the next Call of the Wild map since there are a lot of rumors of new maps being a thing that we could see very soon. So we are now approaching the best lake for Ibex. And I think what we're gonna do is temporarily place this tent down somewhere. That way we can get a tripod stand because I want to be able to set up a tripod, that way we can actually take a decent amount of them for cash. And we do have a couple tripods that we get just from uh, having the DLC. So whenever you get the DLC, you do get three of them for free. So we will toss that in there. I'm not going to put any, any limitations on stands or anything, because they're really just to help with hunting pressure. And early on especially, I think it's very vital to be able to control your hunting pressure, especially when you're grinding for cash, so we're not really going to put any limitations on those. But hopefully when we get up here, there's going to be a decent amount of Ibex and Mouflon. So let's get a stand put right there. And see what we can do here. We probably will have spooked off some of the closer ones, but these guys did not move at all. That seems to be a pretty good shot. And that one too, I believe. That is two Ibex down. Hopefully we'll see a big five running off. That's kind of what I'm hoping for at least. Well, that guy right there is looking pretty good. If he just goes broadside, then of course he's not going to. Well, I guess we will never know if this is going to work unless we try, so... I think we got a second one too. Hopefully at least. I really hope we did. So we have a level 3 Ibex pretty close now. Let's see if we can get this guy. He's a little bit farther than the other ones that we've taken out. So this might not be as easy. But it looks like we drilled him. I had got an Ibex call behind us. And there's actually a couple of them right here. This is actually kind of convenient because they are way closer than the others. I think that was a good shot, too. I would imagine that guy's going to go down pretty quickly. And then once this guy goes broadside, we'll get him, too. In fact, that right there is good. And that is the last round in the magazine. Maybe we can get one of these. We definitely hit them. And I think the last thing we're going to do is try a long range shot on this good level 4. Definitely hit right above it. I think that one hit though. 
Thankfully, we have our dog here to help us track. Otherwise, this would be extremely difficult to find anything at all. But it shouldn't be too hard with our little dog chasing down all these tracks. There is one of them. Level 3, we got left lung on that one. 1149 cash, and we just leveled up from that also. Let's go ahead and get our dog tracking this next one. And then we will go ahead and apply that skill point. So let's see what we can do. We already have one in Ambusher, and I think it's because we were trying to get to Spotting Knowledge, and that is actually what we're going to put it in. So we can now reveal information about the approximate health of the animal, which that's going to be kind of nice. Here is the next one, another level 3, and another 1150 cash. These guys are honestly amazing for cash, especially if you can get a ton of them down quickly. And we just unlocked the 6.5, so that's going to be absolutely huge. Because it's a lot better than most of the guns that we have right now, so I definitely want to start using it. Uh, let's go ahead and claim that, 108. That one is one that we apparently didn't hit vitally, so we didn't get full uh, cash on that guy, but still a decent amount. Let's have our dog chase down some more. So one thing I didn't realize before that's actually kind of cool is when you pull out the hunter mate, it still shows the tracking cone even with the tracks turned off. So I think that might be how we'll try tracking things. And that still doesn't really take away from the whole hardcore aspect. It just makes it so we have to have our hunter made out in order to actually track animals. Which actually is kind of cool. And I do think that we will eventually try to go for the uh, skills for tracking. Because I got to thinking. And we still need to be able to see what the health of the animal is when we're picking up blood. That's still like a very vital thing that'll be extremely helpful. So we're definitely going to try and get those perks. Uh, let's see if we can find anything else. Our dog seems to have found most of the animals. I think there's probably a couple we're missing though. Oh yeah, she definitely found one more. 154. This is the other level 4 mouflon that we shot. I think there's one more Ibex. We'll real quickly go check that. And then after we do that, we're going to run up to the tower up there, grab that, come down and get this outpost, and then we will head up north to this Red Deer Lake over here. There we go. Our dog did find us one more animal. It's a level 3 Iberian Mufon. Kind of a strange one at that. Well, that's another 700 cash, and now it is time to head up to the tower. I'm pretty sure we got every animal. We might be missing one or two, but we got the majority of them, and we're now at 15,000 cash, so even better. We can finally get ourselves the 6.5. Ooh, there's actually a bunch of Ibex over here that just spooked off along with some Mouflon. Uh, let's see if we can spot anything good. That one looks pretty big right there. It's a good four, it looks like. Not bad at all. Uh, hopefully there's something even bigger. I'd love to be able to find a diamond this episode, but... It's not really looking like it. There is a very high chance that we could have a diamond with the Ibex somewhere on the map, but as of now, I just don't see any. Since there's nothing too crazy here, we'll just take out a couple of these if we can uh, before they leave, because it looks like they are starting to leave this area. But we should be able to get this one down right here if it will stop the trotting. And unfortunately, I think that's the only one we'll be able to get. Well, I guess one thing I should probably clear up since we did just mention getting the 6.5 recently. I don't count the 6.5 as one of the DLC weapons that we can't use until we unlock everything else. Since the 6.5 is an unlockable rifle. The 6.5, the 300, the 470. Actually, I don't think the 470 is. But the 6.5, the 300, and the 303, I believe, all require you to unlock them before you're actually able to use them. Anything that we can unlock just like that, we can use whenever we unlock it. There we go. We finally made it up to the top and got this lookout point unlocked. Now we will be able to go down and grab this lodge and then hopefully get up to where some red deer are. And now we are finally back down here at this outpost. Now we can go ahead and take a look to see if we've unlocked anything else besides the 6.5. I don't remember when we get the Hyperion. I'm hoping it's going to be very soon or that we have already got it. I wasn't really paying attention. And it looks like the Hyperion 
requires a little bit more rifle score, but we're really close, honestly. I think we're going to have that in no time. Let's real quickly try to get a hold of the 6.5, though. If I can find it, there we go. So we have the lightning and the thunder available. I think we're going to go with the thunder one. I think that looks a little bit better. So let's buy that real quickly and get a little bit of 6.5 soft points. There we go. So, honestly, I think since we're running short on time for this video, we are going to go ahead and jump over to Silver Ridge Peaks for the last portion of this, just so we can kill some Pronghorn to get the Hyperion unlocked. I think that's going to be the fastest way to do it, so let's hop over there real quickly. There is the first of the pronghorn, and that should have been a decent shot. Yeah, he is going down. He's about to die. Now, another thing that I forgot about is we can actually do some of the missions for XP and money. So, let's real quickly just uh, grab all this stuff. I think while we're here, we might as well unlock this outpost, uh, just so we can save a little bit of time. And... Honestly, I've been recording for about an hour now. I don't know how much of what I've recorded is actually going to make it into this video because we've done quite a bit and it's going to be very long. I might just speed up some of the sections of the video, so I don't know what all is going to be in it, but I'll try to include all of the important stuff at least. But with a series like this, it's going to be pretty impossible to showcase everything we do, so... What do you guys think we should do in the next episodes? Should we include every single kill or just the important kills? Uh, just key moments like unlocking things? Uh, should we maybe just speed up a bunch of the kills to make it go by a little bit faster? And by speed up, I just mean uh, fast forwarding through all of the kills and then showing the claiming. Or what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments because I'm really curious how you guys think we should do this just so we can show as much as possible without making the videos too long. But there is our first little pronghorn, 5150 scoring, 810 cash, and 34 weapon score. That actually did give us a level up, which means we have another perk point. Uh, let's see. Increased ready speed after firing for all weapons. Uh, breath control, that's going to be huge. Steady hands is also going to be huge. I think breath control is probably the one that we're going to go for for now. Although, I think there is another one that incre or like changes the heart rate effects. I don't know which one that is. Well, I guess it is going to be one of these that we'll choose. So we will take Breath Control Level 1. That's going to be very, very helpful. That is a turkey right there, which uh, we might actually just try to take out with the 270. Just so that we can get it down, because those are a decent bit of money, and we can also get a little bit of rifle score for that. There's also a level 7 bear up there. We're probably going to try and take that out too. In fact, that is looking like the perfect position to take this guy out in. That should have been pretty good. We'll do a quick spot and see. And yeah, that guy's definitely going down. There is our little turkey for scoring, just a small one. Glad that thing wasn't a diamond because level 2s can make diamonds sometimes. And since we can't see the weight estimates right now, that very well could have been one, but it was the lower weight estimate, so that is good. We've got a level 2 bear right here. We're going to try and get it to stand up on its back legs. And in fact, I think that's what it's doing right now, so that was a little bit too late and should be good. And our dog has found this bear right here. Let's real quickly grab this thing. 20.30, that's actually a pretty good one. Uh, not anything too crazy as of now, but we'll get ourselves a level 9 or something eventually. Well, that's a really big mule deer. We're definitely going to go for that guy over there. That is a beauty right there. Let's go grab this bear first, and then right after we get the bear, we're going to go get that guy. Because that's a nice muley. Here is that other bear that we took down. This is the female that we got in the lung. 
8094 cash. We should be getting pretty close to getting the Hyperion. I'd say after we get a few more kills, we'll probably have it. Yeah, that is a beautiful mule deer buck. Look at that beast right there. What a beauty. There's also a pronghorn coming in. Man, if we can get both of these. In fact, let's try to be as quick as we can so that we can get both of them. Unfortunately, because we had just been moving, I didn't have enough breath to actually take this guy down. So let's do it now. I wanted to try and get that one along with the pronghorn, but there was just no way we were going to be able to do that. So uh, hopefully now we can find this pronghorn. There he is. What a beautiful buck that is. That's a pretty solid mule deer. Especially for being our first mule deer kill here on Silver Ridge Peaks. What a beauty. Just look at the size of this guy. That is quite incredible, honestly. Unfortunately, he didn't die in a very good spot. Uh, so we're probably going to save this harvest. I do want to uh, get a screenshot of him just for... The uh, thumbnail of this video most likely because I doubt we're gonna get anything better so let's go ahead and move on oh 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 my that is that is a level three maybe leucistic pronghorn I can't quite tell if that's leucistic or albino from this range it's definitely one of them though that's really cool that's gonna be our first good kill here on the hardcore series that is super cool to see I was hoping that we'd find just a bunch of pronghorn so that we could get enough uh, weapon score for the Hyperion, but we actually have a pretty cool kill here too. This might be the first taxidermizable animal. There we go. We finally got their attention. That took way longer than I expected it to, but we finally got them to look towards us and I think it actually spooked. How did that not uh, go darting off? I'm a little confused at that. That was some of the strangest behavior I've ever seen from pronghorn or really any animal. It's clear up there now. We might be able to shoot another and get away with it. Should be good right there. There, he finally stopped up there. Now it's just going to be a matter of getting him broadside and getting our dog out of our way. That's one thing they need to change. Make it so the dog doesn't constantly go in front of you. Because that can be very annoying at times. This guy right here should probably be in a good spot soon to where we can actually take a shot. That actually should get him broadside right there. Once he goes broadside, we'll take the shot. This guy always manages to get himself behind some kind of brush. It's so rough and he just randomly runs away like this. Honestly, at this point, I just want to get him down. We've spent way too much time trying to line up a perfect shot on something that's only level 3 in the first place, so we're just going to take that shot and hope for the best. Wait a second, I think we did make that shot, actually. I think I see it right there. Yeah, that's definitely our leucistic, and that is a lot of blood next to it. We definitely made that shot. I'm actually kind of impressed with the fact that we actually hit that. I did not expect that to go well. But there you have it. Leucistic Pronghorn. Let's go ahead and claim this thing. Uh, get our dog to sit and praise him real quickly. Or praise her real quickly. And let's pick it up. 7160 Leucistic scoring. Or Leucistic fur type Pronghorn. I have been recording for quite a while now. So I'm starting to... Uh, get uh, tripping over my words and stuff unfortunately but we finally got something good at least so we aren't going home empty handed and we should be pretty close to unlocking the Hyperion also in fact I wouldn't be surprised if this one right here unlocks it and yeah just like I said Hyperion 4 to 8 rifle scope unlocked that is awesome and we unlock the poly tip for the 6.5. Unfortunately, we can't use poly tips in this series, so that doesn't really help us too much. But we did get the Hyperion, so let's run back down to the lodge. And actually, let's just fast travel there now that I think of it. Although, real quickly, I do want to place a tent up here, because this is actually a spot that I would love to go to. If we can possibly find a smooth surface to place this on. There we go. Let's go ahead and fast travel down here. Actually, what am I even thinking? 
I am just all over the place today. It's good that we're getting close to the end of this video because I don't know how much longer I could go on. Uh, but anyway, there is the Hyperion Rifle Scope right here. So now we just need to get the money for it and we'll have ourselves a really nice scope. So next episode, you guys will see us using the Hyperion. We finally have it unlocked. Now we just need the money. I did not expect to be heading into the lodge this episode, but here we are in our Sasika Safari with our very first uh, trophy kill, a Leucistic Pronghorn. A really cool one to get as our first rare of the series. I'm hoping that we can get our first diamond within the next couple episodes, but I honestly can't complain with getting a nice rare like this, especially since the Pronghorn rares are some of my favorite by far. But anyway, that's really all we have to show off. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, click like, and ring that notification bell so you guys will never miss a video. Also, be sure to comment down below with your favorite part of this series, some more things that you think we could change in this series, a few things that could be added to the series, or just in general, how much you enjoyed the series. But anyway, we will be back with another episode soon. But until then, I will see you all in the next one. Peace!